Okay, so we're going to continue working on the chair, not the table, as I called it earlier, that we got at a thrift store. And this is just a nice old piece from the 70s that has a pretty shape, but the colors and the finish is kind of outdated. And so we've already got one coat of uh, the chalk base paint on our corduroy seat, and now I'm going to go to the actual chair itself and paint the wood and the cane. And this is one thing that's really fun with this type of paint is you can go right over cane or rush or any of these natural materials and it looks so different when it's got a nice coat of paint on it. We're lucky with this one, it's not broken, it doesn't have any cracks or missing pieces. You have to be real careful when you're getting pieces that have cane or rush because very often it gets dried out and breaks and has some missing spots or some weak spots or some warped spots. So you want to check it very carefully before you purchase it. And it's also hard to find people to repair this kind of thing. That's kind of an art that used to be common and it's not being done too much anymore, sadly. So if we can find a piece like this one that has perfect cane, we've got a good candidate for an upcycle. And it takes it from being something that's tired and outdated to being something that could be in House Beautiful Magazine. Really pretty. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not having to use the Block It Primer on this because it doesn't have any tannins. It's an artificial finish on the wood and it's not going to have anything that will come through. So I can just go right ahead with my two coats of paint. And you want to do your first coat a little lighter, your second coat heavier. It will level out and get rid of the brush strokes and give you that vintage look. Got a little bit of carving on the top here, so I'm kind of smushing the paint into that to get all those little areas that are carved. That's another area that looks so pretty after it's painted. It looks like something that would be in a magazine now. But it's always a good idea to check an old piece like this for structural damage before you purchase it. Check the legs, make sure they are not rickety, make sure that you've got the metal tabs on the bottom of all the legs so that it won't uh, be tippy. and kind of watch out for any bad stains on the seats because that's something that can sometimes bleed through if it's a really oily stain. We were lucky this one had perfect cane and a sound fabric seat with no stains. And you can see how far this paint goes. It's, it's really nice. I'm just kind of working it into all the cane and it's covering beautifully. I, I'm going to do two coats, but the first coat is already giving me some nice coverage. I love doing pieces like this because you can finish them in 24 hours and have a new piece to put in your home or to sell that looks like a million dollars. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish painting this piece and then we'll go back to the second coat on the fabric. Okay, we're back to finish the chair that we got from the local thrift store. And I just want to show you here on our velvet, ribbed velvet, almost like a corduroy seat. This is what I had been painting before when you were watching and this is the second coat and you can see how you get a nice uniform surface and it covers all that nasty old gold color and we've got a really pretty antique color. Um, a lot of times on these fabrics that have a little bit of pile or um, texture to them, it can feel a little bit stiff and the way to just get around that is to take one of your sanding blocks and give it a real light sanding 
and that will soften it up and give you a velvet look again. You can even hear the difference. What that does, makes it soft again. And then we'll go ahead and wax that to seal it off and to keep it pliable. And what I'm using is just clear wax, and you don't have to mix this one up like you do with the waxes that have the pigment in them because there's nothing to separate. And I'm just going to take one of my dry brushes here and start working the clear wax into the surface. And I really like what this wax does to the look of the fabric. Kind of smooths it out and gives it a finished look and a little bit of a polish. So I'm going to brush it all on the half that's got my second coat that's complete with the paint. And then we're going to work it into the surface with a dry rag. We've got a couple of other examples of chairs that have been finished with this technique. One's done on rush and one's done on kind of a cut velvet, I guess. And so you'll be able to see what it looks like on a couple different things. Okay, so again, very fast technique. We've got the wax over the surface, and I'm just going to work it into that and take off my excess. And I had a chair in my store for about four months that was a bright turquoise and gold jacquard fabric. And we did it in Mulberry, we did the clear wax, and it was amazing how soft it stayed over all those months, and in all the times that we sat in it and our customers sat in it, paint never came off on anybody. So it's, it was kind of a fun project to have on the floor so people could see how this really works. You couldn't do this with latex or acrylic paint, but with this type of product, it does work. And because the fabric's absorbent, I'm not having to work too hard to get off the excess. It's taking it, absorbing it into the fibers, and then I'm just taking off what's left. I'll give it one last go over. And I'm just working with the grain, if you will, with the texture of the fabric so that it goes into those little grooves that are kind of like corduroy on this. And already that's soft. You can see it moves, it's not stiff. It's gonna be a great piece. What we're going to do next is work with our cane. We've gotten two coats of paint on this chair during the break, and we're going to work some crowning touch. I'm gonna to do the smoky bronze over the antique color. It's a really wonderful classic look. And just work it under the wood itself and into the cane so that you can see how it gives it a antique look. So for the crowning touch I'm going to use a wet terry cloth towel for the wax I used to dry one. Let me turn this just a little bit so I can see it. And I just really love this smoky bronze color in the crowning touch because it's a brown with a little bit of gray in it so it's a super good neutral. So I'll do a little on the wood and then a little on the cane so you can see what they both look like. So I apply the crowning touch, then I'm going to take a flat surface on my wet terry cloth towel and take off the excess. And the crowning touch kind of works its way into the grain of the wood so you get a textured layered effect and then it also goes into any nooks and crannies on the surface of the piece which also helps to give you an antique look. Okay, so you can see on the wood what that did, and now I'm going to do just the same thing on the cane. Using a fairly dry brush here, because I don't want to get a lot of goopiness on the back of the cane and have too many drips, so I'm just working it through all the texture 
only dipping my brush in just a little bit so that there's just a bit on the surface and not pushing it too hard in there because I don't, like I said, I don't want it to have goofy bits on the back. And then again, I'll take my flat surface on the towel and take off the excess. This is one of the things that I love using the crowning touch on because anything that has a lot of texture like that really shows the contrast. And just for fun, let's do a little bit on this carved section on the top. Looking that in. I'm going to go ahead and do this part too, just so I don't have a line. And then taking another fresh part of the towel and wiping it off. And what I do is I like to keep it kind of flat like that, because then when I go over the carved area, it takes it off the surface, but it doesn't take it off all the recessed areas. So you get more contrast. I'm just working a little bit in there. I think this is one of the times when the crowning touch really shines because it's just great for showing off a detailed area like that. And see, you can see how much more interest that has than when you just paint and leave it that way without one of the antiquing mediums over it. So what we would do next is let this dry overnight and then tomorrow we're going to put two coats of the interior satin clear coat over the entire wood and cane part to seal it. The fabric, however, you don't want to use the clear coats on. That's one of the very few times that you're not going to seal your work with the clear coat or the matte finishing cream. You're going to use the wax and like I said, you can see what that does. It keeps it really nice and supple, the clear coat would make it stiff. So one of the few times you don't do that. I'll go ahead and continue with this, and then we're going to talk about how to actually dye fabric with the chalk base paint. Just before we go to talk about how to dye fabric with the paint, I wanted to share with you a couple of projects that were done here at Vintage Market and Design um, with paint on fabric or brush or cane. This darling little chair came in brown and kind of tired looking and one of the gals painted it with a combination of lace and antique and the new clear faux glaze. She just had a plate, she did a little puddle of the two colors and the glaze and pounced it on, kind of worked the colors together, let it dry and then on the rush, which is pliable just like fabric, it's a, it's a fiber, um, she did the dark umber wax. That's the way to seal that type of a sur surface. And then on the wood, she sealed it, or excuse me, she used the smoky bronze crowning touch to antique it and then sealed it with interior satin clear coat. And you can see what a darling little chair this is now. I, I don't think it's going to be here for very long. This one was one of our classic kind of 1980s style. It was uh, blonde wood with a tan seat and it was painted with two coats of twig, both on the fabric, which is kind of a cut velvet, and on the wood. And then to seal the fabric, it was sealed with uh, dark umber wax. And to seal the wood, it was done with matte finishing cream. So you've got a nice matte look on both the surfaces, and look how modern this is. It's, this would be just beautiful in a dining room now. So here's just two more examples of what you can do.